G'day there everyone, now in store for you today is a little bit of content type, best practice, advice, and little tips for you when you're using uh, content types in your SharePoint document libraries. Now before we dive in, just a little bit of a quick message from today's video sponsor, and that is my very own SharePoint and Copilot Mastery membership uh, that is really for business professionals and collaboration leaders, IT professionals that really do want to transform the way their work workplace operates by combining uh, not only the share, the goodness of SharePoint, but also the now uh, amazing artificial intelligence that is being brought to you via Copilot as well. Uh, so head over to danielanderson.io forward slash course uh, and uh, become involved in that little membership as well. Now, on to today's video. Let's get cracking. We're on a SharePoint communication site here, but I am going to jump into uh, a team site for this particular purpose. Now, we first of all, we're going to create a content type and then we're going to add it to a document library. You can see that I've got a policies and procedures document library here in this site. When I click on the new button, I've got all of the default and out of the box um, options for me here. But I'm gonna create a content type called policy and we're going to add that to this library. So I'm going to jump up into the site information and I'll go to view all site settings and then inside our site settings, if we've got the appropriate permissions, I've got this under web designer galleries and we've got co uh, site content types. Now this is contained to this particular site collection. We're not doing this in the global uh, content type hub, but this is the site collection content types. All I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna create a content type and I'll call this one uh, company policy and we'll create a new category for this and we will call this uh, SharePoint and Copilot. And then what we will do is we need to have a parent, okay? Every content type needs to have a parent. This one is going to be, the parent is just going to be a document and we will hit create. So that's now created an out of the box, stock standard, custom content type. We can add additional columns if we want to. So for, for a policy, it probably makes sense that we have a maybe a policy owner, which we will choose, uh, let's just leave it as custom column. We'll choose a personal group and we'll hit save. And we'll just add one more and we'll go a review date for this policy. Uh, and we'll go and we'll choose date and time for our column type and we'll hit save. So we've got our company policy content type created. Now, if we go back into our site, we're going to add this content type to our document library. So I'm gonna jump into policies and procedures. Now, I'll go to add a column, but at the bottom of this list here, I can go add a content type, I'll go to next, and what we will see in our options is a couple of ones that we've already got and also our company policy, and I'll hit apply. So now that we've got that added to our library, I can go new uh, in a second, and I'll go new uh, company policy. But what we'll see is we've still got this document, out of the box document content type in our library. Now, as a best practice here, I would uh, always remove, if we're using a custom content type, always remove the default document content type from the library, all right? Because what we'll notice is when you upload, this is the, the, the document, well, the out of the box document content type is the actual uh, default content type, right? So that means if somebody does this and drags and drops or, or uploads or creates a document inside of this library, what we will see when I add the content type column to the view is that that will always be document by default and a user would have to come into here, select the properties and then actually change the content type from company policy, okay, across to company policy. Now, a little trick here and a little tip is if we go to library settings and we go to more library settings here, what we'll be able to do is a couple of things. We can change the new button order and the default content type. So we could do that and we could change the company policy uh, position and we could choose whether we have the document visible or not, right? But 
The other thing that we can do, because we're not really going to use this out of the box document content type. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just going to remove this, right? So I'm just going to go delete content type. I'll click okay. And then, uh, well, it's on hold. I've got some settings in, in, this, uh, in this site here. But now when I go to policies and procedures, what we'll see is that we now only have company policy. All right, so that now means when a new document is uploaded, so let's just go to drag and drop another document up here. What we'll see is that default content type now is automatically company policy. And then what we might do, just as a little bit of an added extra here, we'll go policy owner, policy review date. I don't want these two and I'll hit apply. Uh, and then let's just set this so that you get an idea of uh, what this looks like. So I'm just going to go Nesta as our policy owner. I'll hit our review date of there and I'll hit save. And now we've got our metadata set for that particular. Now I actually want the photos, I want the images here. So let's go to uh, column settings. We'll go to edit column settings and we'll go show profile photos. I'll hit save. And now what we've got is the policy owner there. So there we go. A little bit of a tip for you and best practice around using content types in your document library. Remove the default document content type if you're using your own custom ones in a library. Thanks for watching. See you in the next episode.